Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Max, and today I'm very excited to be installing and reviewing a rear entertainment display in my Tesla Model 3, this one made by the auto accessory company Handshow. Now, like I said, this is gonna be going in my Model 3, but this does function with both the Model 3 and the Model Y. It's got an 8.6 inch display. It allows you to control things all across your car from AC to your seat position. It also has Apple CarPlay functionality and runs on Android OS, so you can have access to the Google Store and a plethora of different apps. It has a few pre-installed like Netflix and YouTube, so it really gives you access to a ton of different things. On top of being able to load your own content on there if you want to hard download anything to the included thumb drive. Now, Handshow as a company makes a ton of different Tesla accessories. Actually, compared to the other sites that I've looked at in the past, they probably have the widest variety of accessories available. So I'll definitely drop a link to their site in the description below if you wanna check it out. And not only did they provide this product for free for me to do a review, but they also gave me a discount code for my viewers that'll give you 15% off your order when you go to check out for whatever you wanna buy. So if you're interested in this product or really anything they have to offer, definitely check them out and use my discount code so you can get the best possible deal. Thank you so much Handshow for that discount code and also providing the product to do this video on today. But yeah, very excited to get into this box Ever since the Highland refresh, I've been super jealous of that screen in the back of the car. I think it looks really slick, and as someone who has two toddlers, that is gonna be an awesome feature to have so they can watch shows when going on long car rides. Without further ado, let's get into the box and get this on the car. So right away, very nice big box, very nicely packaged to keep your product safe if you were to order this. You can see we have the screen inside here with protective foam, so let's go ahead and get that out. So here we have the main display wrapped up in plastic. And you can see here we have a nice big eight inch display with built-in vents so that you can still use your air conditioning when you install this in the proper place. It also has two USB-C ports, which is also great that you do not lose your charging by having this installed. Along the back, you see we have a single wire that we will use to rig into our Tesla's electrical system, similar to some of the other installs you've seen on this channel. Other than the screen, we have another bag of accessories that we'll be using for the install. We have our wiring harness that will be using to splice into the electrical system in the Tesla. We have a plastic crowbar that will be used to pry apart different parts of the car and different panels so that we can get into the system and do this install. We have a wire cap, we'll have to see in the directions what this is used for. And we have a USB to USB-C thumb drive. This will have to be used to send data to this tablet or else be able to utilize any kind of USB product with the USB-C hookups on the screen setup. And that's all that came in the box. There's no explicit directions, but they do have this thank you note that has a QR code. So I'm imagining that this leads to directions on how to do the install likely with a video. So I'm gonna look at that now and then get to installing this in the car and walk you through my experience with installing this. Very excited to see how this works. So let's get into that now. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when doing the install is to remove the rear air conditioning trim panel cover. From here, you're gonna see wires that run into this cover and disconnect both of those plugs from the air conditioning unit. The rear screen accessory kit comes with an emergency plug cover that you'll cover up the wire while you're doing this work to ensure that it doesn't get any false connections. Using the included crowbar, go to the bottom console trim and work your way around the seam to pop this off. If you've watched any of my other videos about wiring things directly into the car, this is the same panel we've accessed before. Mine comes off fairly easily as I've pulled it on and off many times, but if it's your first time, be patient so that you don't end up scratching your interior. Once you have this exposed, you'll note two screws that are sitting above your wired chassis. My personal chassis here, you can see has a few different items wired into it, but if this is your first time doing an install, you'll just see a single blue plug that you'll be wiring into. Remove the two screws above that plug, which will allow you to pull out the middle trim panel from the rear outlet of the air conditioner. When the screws are out, grab this panel and pull in a up and away motion to pull it out of its place. With the center completely exposed, unplug the original blue plug and then wire in the module adapter that has your split offs that will power the screen. Now here's what where I did differed from the directions. 
in the directions, it showed me wiring a separate wire to control the seats. However, in my version of the Model 3, this wire to control the seats was also part of the center console. So I was able to skip over step eight in the directions if you're following along there and go immediately to step 17. The initial step here will be instead of just plugging in the power harness, you'll also be plugging in the seat control wire, but it is much simpler than directions show since both wires are located directly behind the screen versus one being in the passenger seat panel. Once you plug this in, you should see that the screen immediately powers up. And before snapping this into place, go ahead and play around with the functionality and the buttons to ensure that everything is working correctly and that you do not need to adjust the wiring. From here, I went and replaced the middle trim panel, pushing that back into place, and then replacing the screws to secure this back into its original position. Next, replace the rear panel. This again was a little bit more difficult for me since I have multiple wires spliced into this connection, but all you really have to do is get them organized so that you can snap that panel back into place. The final step is to snap the screen into position. During this installation, you'll need to hold it from the bottom of the screen first and then get into the top buckle. I again struggled a little bit with this, but as I've said previously, I have other wires running in there, which made the space really limited and tight. But after playing with it for a little while, I was able to get it in position and snap it down so it lined up perfectly. And that's really it for the install. So now with all that installed, here's a quick video demoing the screen, how it looks and how it works. Now I think this goes without saying, but this screen looks incredible. It fits seamlessly into the Tesla design and almost looks like it could be an original factory accessory to begin with. All the seams are flush and it matches the matte interior exactly. I honestly would be hard pressed to tell the difference between the look of this screen and the one in the new Highland refresh. Functionality wise, everything works great. You can control the AC, you can control the seat heaters, you can even adjust the front seats from the screen in the back, which is a really neat feature, although I don't know why someone in the back would be messing with the seats up front. Also, the inclusion of Apple CarPlay is a neat little bit of functionality. And while my kids are probably too young to use that, I could totally see older kids or adults utilizing the Apple CarPlay feature to control the music from the back screen versus having to tell the people up front to pull up different playlists. So that's awesome. And the screen does connect to the car via Bluetooth, so it can play the music that you're directing on that tablet up through the main audio. Now, when it comes to video services and apps, the tablet comes built in with Netflix, YouTube, and a few other applications, but as you are running the Android OS, you do have access to the Google Store and can download a plethora of other applications to fit whatever need you're looking for. If you have an Android tablet, then you know exactly what this is like, and everything should be very intuitive. Personally for me, when I'm putting on content for my kids, what I do is I turn my cell phone into a personal hotspot, I have the screen connect to that hotspot, and then I'm able to stream through those built-in apps on the go. You can also connect this to Wi-Fi at home if you happen to be parked someplace where Wi-Fi is accessible. Now, if you're someone who doesn't want to use data and is someplace without a Wi-Fi connection, it does come with that USB-C to USB dongle, so you can hard download files onto a USB flash drive, plug it into the screen, move those downloads over, and then have access to whatever content that you're putting on the tablet's hard drive. So that's a really cool feature too if you wanna have readily available access to content with or without a Wi-Fi connection. Now this particular version of the rear screen does have built-in audio, and it works about as good as you'd expect an eight inch tablet to project sound. And it gets plenty loud enough for my kids watching it in the back to hear everything that's going on. You can connect Bluetooth headphones to this screen and you can actually connect the Bluetooth to the car as well. However, what I found when I do connect the audio to the car, it is slightly missynced from the images showing up in the screen. So typically we don't do that and we just have them watch it with the built-in audio from the rear view display, which has been plenty enough for us and our family. The tablet comes with a ton of different controls. If you're familiar with an Android tablet, this should be very familiar to you. You can adjust sound, brightness, screen quality. You can adjust the various connections that you have, whether it be to Bluetooth devices, to the car, to Wi-Fi networks, really anything that you can think of that your tablet would do, this has that functionality, and all on a nice 8.6 inch HD display. And if you're like me and you have children in the back of the car, there are also parental controls as well, so you can lock up the screen to make sure they're not messing with your seats or the AC if you don't want them touching those controls. Funny story about that is somehow one of my kids actually accidentally put the Tesla into dog mode 
which keeps the AC running even when you've left it and it locks up. We didn't realize they had done that until we went to go back in the car and found that we had lost 15% of battery because the AC had just been blasting while it was 90 degrees out. This is a really good use case for having that in parental lock unless you're specifically putting on a certain application or show for your children to watch. So something to make note of. Also something to note on that topic is that when you put it into parental lock, there is a code required to get it in and out of that mode. And I had to reach out to the Handshow customer service to get that code, but that was not a big deal of a process. They got in contact with me through the WhatsApp application and we were able to sort through what that factory standard code was from the get-go. So I was able to get access to the screen after putting the parental lock on. So yeah, kudos to their customer service and walking me through all that as well. Finally, from an install perspective, I would probably have to say that this would be in the moderate difficulty range. None of it was too bad, but I'm also very familiar with unplugging and plugging things into the same chassis that I was using for this since I've had several other installs that were very similar. What I will say is the wiring itself, there's nothing complicated, you're not splicing anything. Taking the parts on and off is super easy. Honestly, for me, the difficult part was snapping that screen into place, but again, I think that's a product of the fact that I have a lot of different third-party things wiring into that area, making the space really tight. But honestly, the biggest kudos to the install is the fact that this actually had written directions that you could follow along with. More often than not, when I get these products, they send me links to videos that I have to pause and scan through to figure out what exactly happened. And sometimes that can be ambiguous. It was great that Hancho actually has written directions, which made knowing what the step-by-step -step process was that much easier. So biggest recommendation to any other companies that are producing products like this, do the written directions. They make whole installs 100% more simple for the user. All that to say, the screen is awesome and I highly recommend it to anyone who happened to get a Tesla that was prior to the refresh that puts a screen in the back. Gives your car that modern look, it'll entertain your family, and it honestly is just a great piece of hardware at the pretty reasonable price of $359 at the time I'm recording this video. And remember, if you use my code MAXWELL at checkout, you get an additional 15% off, making it an even better deal. If you're like me and are jealous of all those people driving around in the new Model 3s, then this is definitely for you and can get your car that much closer to having these same additional features. But yeah, that's all I had to talk about today. If you did enjoy this video and you wanna see more, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.